Hello, Shelton family. I'm Wayne Carpenter, and we're going to share a little bit this morning about what our community group is doing during this time of social distancing. You know, the first week that our church campus was closed, it remained optional for community groups to continue to meet, and we had quite a debate online about whether to do that or not. Uh, our group has been meeting uh, for over 30 years in one form or another, and we become very, very close. We've walked a lot of life's journeys together, uh, both good times and through some challenging times, and not meeting together was somewhat unimaginable. But the Lord is good, and we're adjusting how we function as a group. Uh, first of all, we meet via Zoom, like many other groups, and we, we, we meet weekly. We start with a chat time as normal, uh, of course, less the traditional treats, although I will tell you, Bruce dearly did bring his ice cream to our last <laughs> session. And we have had, then we go into a time of praying. We pray for our group, uh, for our families, uh, for our church and beyond. And, and then we enter into a, a study time. And Donna Hartwell is going to explain a bit what we're currently doing for biblical study. So Donna? Thanks, Wayne. I came across a new book by uh, John Piper entitled Coronavirus in Christ. And in this short book, he addresses the character and the sovereignty of God, and then explores six things that God may be doing through the coronavirus. By the way, the electronic version is free to everyone and you can download it. I think it was, is leading, it already has been leading to some really heartfelt discussion. It's help us, helping us have a better biblical understanding of the situation and be ready to speak truth to our family and friends when the inevitable question comes up about where is God in all of this? So we are right now suspending our study of Romans, and we're going to spend the next few weeks sharing the book by John Piper together. All right. Thanks, Donna. Uh, so meeting is one thing, but how else do we care for each other in this environment? Uh, one of our groups, uh, one of our group, uh, Blanche Robertson, meet Ken and Blanche, by the way. Uh, Blanche <laughs> had a trip to the ER a couple weeks ago and then was hospitalized for a non-coronavirus condition. And her husband, Ken, is going to tell us a little bit about that experience. So, Ken? Hi, Joan. <clears throat> Blanche's hospitalization uh, during this pandemic uh, was, as you can imagine, a bit scary. We were met at the ER door, and I was not allowed to go in with Blanche, so she had to spend this hospitalization totally alone. However, our community group, although different, the support was very much appreciated. Before we even got to the hospital, a request for prayer had gone out to the group, and we even got a call from one of our group as we were driving to the hospital. Instead of hospital visits, both Blanche and I got many phone calls and texts. Uh, Blanche was released three days later and that medical issue is resolved. Uh, we thank God for the support of our community. All right, thanks, Ken. Uh, so our group continues to support e each other in many ways, both small and large. Uh, last week, Nancy King put out a request for some used uh, bed sheets as she was making uh, face masks. And I understand that the group provided almost enough material to do masks for almost all of Montgomery County. And then Chris Stroud put out a request for some used suitcases uh, for a missionary who needed them for some upcoming travel. And within two hours, three were, three were uh, committed and uh, others stood at the ready. So uh, the group... Uh, continues to support each other in, in, in big and small ways. And of course, we continue to share prayer requests and support each other through prayer. Well, uh, that's a bit about of our group. Uh, thank you for letting us share. And as we always say in our group, God is good all, all the time. time. All right, thank you.